Hello and welcome to Cutting Edge, a programme produced by students from Sheffield Hallam University for Sheffield Live. I'm Grace Hopkinson and I'm Abby Clinch. Our top stories today. Charities say they are under growing pressure following changes to homeless support services. A record number of people are turning to food banks for help as delays in universal credit has left many families unable to put food on the table. In 2018, 5% of Sheffield's population were sleeping rough around the city. As rough sleeping numbers are increasing, there is more pressure being put on charities and services to help those who need it most. Sheffield City Council received £412,000 to help prevent rough sleeping and assist people off the streets in 2019. Is this enough to tackle the problem? I went to the Sunday Centre to find out more. Sheffield City Centre has become a common place for the homeless and rough sleepers. £412,000 was funded to the council in 2019 to help assist the homeless off the streets and into accommodation. However, some homeless people in Sheffield have told the council that they are better off begging on the streets than being placed in accommodation. These people need a clinical environment. It's not just a case of having shelter. They find shelter in shop doorways, they find shelter in uh, all manner areas, multi-storey car parks, where there is central eating in them, or behind uh, buildings, uh, public buildings. It's a clinical treatment, what these people need. There are many shelters located around the city which offer support for those who are on the streets. The Sunday Centre provides hot meals for up to 90 people every Sunday, along with various activities for the homeless to take part in and socialise with others. Charities like the Sunday Centre rely on the help of volunteers and any donations made by people and local businesses. From talking to the people who come here and actually just walking around, you can tell there's more people who are on the streets. What I would say um, is the reasons that people are on the streets are so complex that very often what that money's being spent on is helping people with mental health issues that have not been treated, substance issues, behavioural issues. Homelessness does not just affect Sheffield, it is a nationwide issue. As more and more rough sleepers are appearing on the streets of Sheffield, there is increasing pressure upon local charities to provide food and warmth for the homeless, especially during the winter months. Abby Clinch reporting for Cutting Edge. We are now joined in the studio with former PC Ben Sherman, who is also the founder of Ben Centre. Hi Ben, thanks for coming in the studio today. Hi. So what do charities like Ben Centre do for the vulnerable in Sheffield? Ben Centre offers um, the vulnerable in Sheffield a place of safety. It's where they can get out of their chaotic lifestyle. They can relax, be with um, people of their own kind, um, that they know from the street, so they can come, relax, contact other statutory bodies, medical needs, family needs, basically anything you know anybody would want. But it's it's theirs. They're in their own little environment, so place of safety it is for them. What was it like to see so many homeless people on the street when you were on patrol? It's only when I got posted to the town hall and then saw all the the people in in the peace gardens that had alcohol problems and homelessness that and I started connecting with them and finding that hey these are nice people. When you were a police officer in Sheffield was there a difference in the number of people on the streets then than there is now? Oh yeah there's a lot more now we, we and and the age range is is, is different and all of it when when I, when I was at the town hall they, um, and in the peace gardens they were normally, I suppose you'd class them or stereotype them as the old hobos and they drunk. Now it's a lot, a lot, lot younger. 
what else do you think could be done to tackle this issue? I think it's like I said, it's, it's awareness. Um, <clears throat> and I, I was guilty of this at first, but as I say, it's education. People used to come up, you know, move while you're bothering them. Then, like, alcohol becomes a crutch because they can't cope with what they've been dealt with in that situation. It's the school date, gate syndrome, isn't it? You know, do you want to try this? And, and then it leads on. So, but a lot of the people out there are absolutely really nice people. It's just that they've got to a position of where they are. Yeah. And they need help to get them out of that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, well, thank you very much for coming into the studio You're today. You're welcome. Thank you, thank you for having me. <laughs> in other news, with a record number of people living in poverty, Passing Cross is just one of the food banks aiming to help feed the hungry this winter. Millie Hayward went down to find out more. A record number of families are living in poverty as delays in the national credit system have left many people simply unable to put food on the table. At Parson Cross alone, the amount of emergency free day supply packages given out per year has tripled from 2,000 to over 6,000. I just compared to socialise with the cat. I had me disabled on this stuff and I would buy in court and I had to go to court and to win it. And I bought me a food when my money got stopped and that's how I got to know them. When food is donated, it is split into different categories by a group of volunteers. Once people arrive, they are given the option to pick what food items they may need for the week. Packages are then put together and handed out to the right customers. For some people, Parson Cross is not only where they come to collect food for the week, but a space to socialise and chat to other people in a similar situation. There is even a cafe area where hot drinks and snacks are on offer. Um, so we've got more and more uh, families. Um, some of them uh, um, have been in the benefit system. Um, some of them are working, yeah. are able to earn enough to, to cope in their lives. Um, and we just aim to give a, a helping hand to people who are struggling. As the number of hungry families saw, Organisations like this one continue to help people in crisis. Millie Haywood, Cutting Edge. Now let's look at some of the news from around Sheffield. Transport in Sheffield could be improved as the council bid for 85 million towards buses and cycling. The funding will come from Transforming Cities Fund, which will go towards making buses more reliable, improving cyclist safety, well-being, and also reducing air pollution. The Crucible Theatre is set for a £600,000 refurbishment with the front of the house areas and technical equipment being upgraded. The improvements will be backed by the funding from the Arts Council England and a fundraising campaign will also aim to raise £25,000 towards the overall total. Morrisons have partnered with the food app Too Good To Go to reduce food waste. They expect figures to decrease 50% by 2030. The app will allow customers to buy boxes of unsold groceries just for £3.09p. In other news, Sheffield Council plans to spend £3 million to help people with mental health issues. The project aims to help people regain their independence, which will hopefully lead to improvements in their well-being. Mind Sheffield works alongside hundreds of adults with mental health issues, but is it enough in the city with a population of over half a million? Holly Cutts reports. Sanctuary in Sheffield. This drop-in centre offers support to those in the city that need it. There's a growing awareness about mental health issues, but also a growing number of people seeking help. Uh, mixing with people gets me out of the flat where I live. Um, it, I live some distance away, but uh, I still I think it's worth it. I do like uh, to mix with people and socialise. Because I live on my own, you see. The charity Mind Sheffield says more needs to be done and more money needs to be spent. Mind Sheffield Centre on Sharrow Lane organises Friday sessions for people to chat and do activities. Um, I used to be in the art class and I enjoyed that. And sometimes they have karaoke. 
that's my actual favourite. And I've recently had cancer, so coming here, I've had a lot of support and empathy from the other people. Shocking statistics show that 122 people were detained by South Yorkshire Police under the Mental Health Act last year. Meanwhile, suicides rose by 10% last year across the UK, with over 6,500 people taking their lives. Now to tackle the issue, Sheffield is to get £2.5 million to provide mental health care in neighbourhoods. It's only quite recently that there's been more of an emphasis put on mental health and tackling mental health and helping people to cope with their their mental health. As I say, it's good to have it, but we need just we need uh, more investment in mental health because it's a major major health health issue in the in the country today. It's a puzzle for authorities in Sheffield how they tackle the crisis. Mental health issues affect individuals, families and whole communities. The latest initiative in Sheffield seems to be welcomed, but how much impact it will really have remains a question. Holly Cutts, Cutting Edge. We are now joined in the studio by Councillor George Lindards Hammond, a Cabinet Member of Health and Adult Social Care. Thank you for coming to chat to us today. Nice. Um, why do you think so many people are struggling with mental health problems in Sheffield? So I think that mental health problems of many different kinds, we've seen that they've been on the increase in the terms of being diagnosed nationally and internationally in the last few years, um, and that includes Sheffield, obviously. Uh, there's lots of reasons people offered what, why, why these problems are increasing in terms of perhaps the way we're changing uh, the way we live our lives, um, and more complexity in society and perhaps less support. But also, if you look at specifically at Sheffield, what I'm really clear about is that we don't have um, good enough housing and education and, and the basics in society, which we know from, from evidence, are the basis for a really good mental health. Um, so I think that's some of the Sheffield-specific factors. So the council announced plans to spend £3 million on improving 200 people's independence and helping them overcome personal issues. Is this enough? There's a lot of a lack of investment in, in, the, in the healthcare side from the NHS, but there's also a real struggle for us as a council to make sure that we've got enough money to allow people to live the most independent and full lives um, where you have complex mental health problems. I think it's a fantastic programme we put together here, but absolutely, I'd, I'd rather have 30 million than three, 3 million, but we, we're doing what we can. Uh, what can be done in Sheffield specifically to reduce mental health? What we're trying to do is work increasingly closely with um, the Health and Social Care Trust, who are the main um, health care body who provide services to people with, with mental health conditions, and also the Clinical Commissioning Group who fund those services and really work closer together so that there's much more integrated support. We can actually do it better for everyone if we spend more of our money keeping people well in their homes, actually it's very, very expensive when someone goes into crisis uh, and that's no good for anyone. When, when a crisis setting they have to go into a mental health hospital and get very specialist support. That's always going to be necessary for some people, but actually if we focus on those interventions which will keep people mentally healthy and well at the earliest stage that will really, um, I hope, have real benefit for the city and most importantly those people that need that support. Thank you for your time, George. Thank you. New plans have been released for further development at the Olympic Legacy Park in Attercliffe. The site of the former Don Valley Stadium will now be home to a variety of facilities, one of which will be a new stadium. Olivia Griffiths went to find out more. Sheffield Eagles are the nomads of rugby league, swapping stadiums year after year. But now the Eagles have landed and they're back in their home city. Their old home at the Don Valley Stadium is to become their new one, the Olympic Legacy Park. The ground is a big part of it and uh, for us to have a, an home again after what, I think it's six or seven years since Don Valley got knocked down is, is paramount to the club's development. We've not had our own stadium in that time. Um, obviously it's been a bit of a drawn out thing getting this new stadium but yeah, everyone's looking, uh, looking forward to it, really exciting, um, getting a, a home ground. 
The £5 million redevelopment will also house various health, fitness and education facilities. It was the brainchild of Sheffield's former sports minister. We've got one plan with the Children's Hospital, Child Centre for Health Technology, we've got a food technology, we've got the Advanced Wellbeing Research Centre and there will be others. So it is an evolving scene, it will be a living laboratory. The Eagles are celebrating winning the 1895 Cup at Wembley and the trophy will have pride of place at the Olympic Legacy Park. The club hope that success and the new ground will bring back the fans. Our keys are obviously to build our tenancies. We've been outside the city, our tenancies dropped massively. We've built them back up slightly uh, with the base that we've got there. It's a temporary base. We, we're averaging now around 900. When we was at Don Valley Stadium, a major stadium, we was averaging around 1500 to our aim is to get back to that. What we have created here, I think, is something unique, which is education, which is training, which is research and development, and training some of the best athletes in the world here on this site. I think it'll just go on and hopefully we'll be an inspiration for many people in the future. Work on the Olympic Legacy Park complex will continue throughout this year, as well as on the facilities at the ground. And with the rugby league season now underway, the Eagles are flying. Olivia Griffiths for Cutting Edge. Powerlifting champion Kelly Clark first visited the Titanium Strength Gym when she was a size 18. Kelly is now training for the next British Championships. I went down to take a look. Shifting the weight by lifting the weight, Kelly Clark first walked into the gym to slim down. She went from a size 18 to a size 8 in 14 months and lost three and a half stone. I was 50 years old, I had arthritis, I felt old, I was overweight. So mobility was an issue, couldn't even really close my car boot with one arm. Um, going upstairs was painful, so it was like, I've got to do something. Other gym routines failed to inspire Kelly, so she tried powerlifting. She was then talked into competing. She's now finished fourth in the World Championships. She managed to lift 117.5 kilograms. She only weighs 69 kilos. Drive it up, come on, drive it up. Uh, it makes it better even for the fact all the hard work I've seen her doing. Uh, obviously it's all paid off. She's progressed really fast. In short space of time she's done absolutely fantastic. And uh, I wish her all the best for the future. Kelly's at the Titanium Strength Gym three times a week. Training never stops. And of course, taking up powerlifting and now starting competing has, has really changed my life. Kelly is now training for the British Championships, which take place later this month. And with it comes the weight of expectation. Grace Hopkinson reporting for Cutting Edge. Oh, not sure I'd be able to do that. Yeah, carrying my shopping bags is enough for me. <laughs> anyway, that's all for today's show. Join us next time when another group of students will be bringing you the latest news. Goodbye. Goodbye.